media of art sculpture okay so with sculpture here this is a, the first of our two examples of three-dimensional art uh, at least in in our media section here and uh, there's basically two types here of sculpture. There's the freestanding sculpture. This is probably the type of sculpture we would think about. Um, you know, if someone just said, think of an example of sculpture, this is, this is probably where our mind would go. And it's also referred to as in the round. It's a sculpture that can be seen from all sides. So you can walk 360 degrees around freestanding sculpture. And that is differentiated from relief. Relief is the type of sculpture that projects out from a background. And there's two different types of relief. There's low or ba relief. And that is when the projection from the background is slight or minimal. And then we have high relief when that projection from the background is more severe. And so they're, they're pretty self-explanatory there. Okay, so this is an example of what we would refer to as a freestanding sculpture. Um, you can see here, this is an example of a marble sculpture using a technique called carving we'll look at in a little bit. And so, um, like I said, this is usually kind of the thing we think about when we think of, of, of a sculpture here, in three-dimensional form that we see there. Uh, this, on the other hand, is the, a relief, and this is a, a low relief. You can see on a coin here, you would want the projection out from the coin to be slight or minimal. Um, if it was too severe, it wouldn't... Uh, really function well as a coin. And so that's an example there of the low or the ba relief. And this is an example of the high relief in more ways than one actually. Uh, but we can see our projection from the background surface, in this case the background surface is, is a mountain, and we can see that the projection is severe, that uh, the heads are, are emerging um, you know, really from that background uh, from that background in a, in a really substantial way here. Another example of relief would be this example. It's kind of a famous example. Um, you can see up at the top, um, this is, is what, what is called the Gates of Paradise. It's on the doors of the Baptistry in Florence, Italy. And if we look at that lower uh, right-hand panel here, you can see that in the lower right hand part of the screen here. I've, I've kind of zoomed, up, zoomed, in, zoomed in on that panel. And you can see how the artist here, the artist is, is choosing to use both low and high relief. That in the foreground, those figures are an example of high relief because they are really projecting out a lot from that background surface. But uh, the farther back you go in, in perspective, um, you see that the artist is using more and more and more minimal shadows. It's kind of an example of a of an atmospheric perspective shown up in this uh, in this relief example here. And so this artist's name is Ghiberti. He's a pretty well known sculptor of uh, of Italy, and he actually was the the teacher of another famous sculptor named Donatello. And so this is how again high and low can be used in conjunction with each other here. All right, so the next uh, section of this we're going to look at is building techniques and methods. And the first three here are more traditional techniques, modeling, casting, and carving. And then we get into some more, uh, I guess, modern techniques with assemblage, kinetic, installation, and site-specific examples. So let's go ahead and look at that first one there, modeling. With modeling, we are just trying to, to essentially push and move the material we're working with into our desired form. And so an example of what you would use with modeling is clay. That's something that we see a lot. And it's a very forgiving process. That's why uh, people use it so often. It's because with clay you can always add, you can subtract. Um, if you want to push something further in, you can push something further in or push something further out. And so this is often used for you know prototypes or initial examples of things and it's also used as you know just a, a finished product in of itself and the way clay works is uh, we'll see later though uh, a little bit more uh, thoroughly I should say um, with clay as it dries out it becomes harder and harder and harder and so um, you know depending on the form you're looking to to get there 
um, you would you know either keep it hydrated and very malleable or uh, allow it to harden out as we are um, you know closing in on the the form that we're looking to create okay so so modeling definitely a process here that that a lot of artists use because of its reworkability okay this example is casting and with casting we would actually start off with something that we would have molded or modeled I should say um, and so something like this could have been uh, taken from a clay original and the way it works is you substitute a different material for that clay model and so for instance something like like this statue the the famous thinker here by the artist Rodin you would originally start with a clay model and you would build some type of structure around that clay model and fill it in with with something like a liquid plaster and let that harden and then as that plaster hardens that would essentially become your mold you would cut that mold in two you would take out your clay model you would put that mold back together and then you would have a cavity where that clay uh, model would it originally have existed and so you'd maybe drill a hole through the top and pour in some kind of casting liquid uh, something like a like a bronze in this case and then you would fill in uh, into that mold with the casting liquid and as it cools it would harden and eventually you would get your bronze rendition of your clay original and so the advantage with this process is you can you know substitute something like clay with something uh, that's going to be a little bit more permanent like this example and you can also make multiple copies. Uh, there's a lot of thinkers out there. You might go to a city park and see a, a thinker somewhere and then go to a different city park and, and happen to see another thinker because uh, there's been a lot of uh, renditions of this one. Okay, so this is an example of casting. Um, the next example, uh, the last for kind of more traditional materials, is carving. And so you can kind of see the process here on the left, how uh, you start off with a, a block of stone in this case. And so both of these are examples of Michelangelo's work. And with Michelangelo, he felt like the sculpture already existed inside of the rock. And it was his job basically to chip everything away until the, the sculpture kind of revealed itself, so to speak. And so on the left, he's kind of in the process of, of achieving the form he's desiring here. And you can see on the right there that that's um, you know, a, a sculpture that's been, uh, you know, shown as a finished product there. And so you can sculpt with a lot of different materials. Uh, limestone, something we see. Marble is, is a lot of what we see in the Western tradition of art. Um, wood is something you can definitely, uh, you know, carve with as well. This is an example of, of Henry Moore. He's an artist of the, the 20th century. Um, who was who was you know somewhat figurative artist and this is an example of one of his his carvings here out of wood. Okay, this is called an assemblage. Okay, and what an assemblage is is an assemblage is is basically like a three dimensional um, a three dimensional version of a collage would be maybe a good definition for it. Um, you can see that the artist is basically taking objects that uh, that he's found, and he's uh, you know basically constructing them together in the same way that you would throw a collage together. And that is essentially what an assemblage is: this three-dimensional uh, form of a collage using cast-off or found objects. Okay, this is an example of something we would call. A kinetic sculpture and this is the artist Alexander Calder who uh, does a lot of these kinetic sculptures and so um, as you can see obviously this one is referencing mobiles that's an example here of, of what a kinetic sculpture would be all about and we don't see a lot of kinetic sculpture but they do deserve mentioning with kinetic sculptures they're really more focused on shape and movement rather than three-dimensional form and mass and volume like most sculptures. Okay, another type of sculpture that is, is popular, especially in the contemporary art world, is something called an installation. Okay, so installation art 
and the next art we're going to look at site-specific art are both similar in some capacities and they're both similar in the fact that the artists are treating the whole space available as a three-dimensional work of art and so with an installation generally that's something you can install somewhere and so we see this example in a museum and I believe this is called Falling Garden if I'm not mistaken and you can see the artist is really interested in getting the viewer here to interact with the atmosphere and, pr and produce a, you know, a particular atmosphere as well. And so part of what we see here is different things we'd expect to see from a garden. We see trees, uh, well, maybe not trees, but limbs from trees, uh, branches, leaves, flowers, vines, different things of that nature that are all being suspended from the ceiling and you can see the floor uh, is very comfortable looking they even have some type of furniture laid out there to encourage the visitors to lay down and uh, directly interact with this uh, particular installation And so you can see how everything about this particular room is is meant to give you kind of this uh, bright springtime feeling maybe something positive something pleasant certainly and the lighting itself is very bright along with the, the colors of the flowers and, uh, and, and pretty much everything here within this atmosphere. And that's going to be a very different atmosphere, a di very different vibe from this next example here. Okay, this is also an installation. And you can see here, see here the lighting is very different. Instead of having the bright lighting, we have very dark lighting. We have kind of that eerie blue lighting com coming from the background. Uh, we also have some highlights hitting that gown there on the back wall which looks somewhat eerie as well as the light hitting that creepy looking mask here in the foreground and so this kind of haunting type of aspect to this atmosphere is quite different than the previous installation example we saw but in both case, cases here the artist is, is doing a good job of trying to you know create that that atmosphere for the viewer to interact with okay now this is the example we we usually uh, go to here for site-specific art. Um, the example we go to here is for what happens with this particular sculpture. Um, this particular sculpture was commissioned from an artist. Uh, you can see the sculpture is right there in the middle. Um, it kind of looks like a fence there. It's uh, entitled the Tilted Arc. And so the artist um, created this to specifically go into this area and there was some controversy that uh, I believe became a court case in New York if I'm not mistaken where uh, they wanted to move the wall but the artist didn't want the wall to be moved because the artist said that he uh, made it for that specific place and so when you know one of the reasons it was unpopular is because people had to walk around it it was kind of a you know a hassle I guess to walk around it as opposed to just uh, walking straight through and so, um, so that was part of the controversy there. And so it kind of became this, this long court case uh, that was drawn out for a while. Uh, but, you know, it gets to the heart of what site-specific art is all about, that something can be created for a particular location. Okay, so those are some of the examples that we have of, of some of our um, kind of more modern type of, of techniques that we have within uh, the realm of sculpture. Okay, another part of sculpture is ceramics. Um, indeed, ceramics is one of the oldest art forms that we have. And so we have a few definitions here at the top. The definition for ceramics is the art and science of making objects from clay. We have the ceramist, which is simply a person who works with clay. And we have a potter, which is a, a particular type of ceramist who specializes in creating vessels. And with vessels, we mean things that are meant to carry things. So things like plates and bowls and cups, things along those lines. Okay. And the next thing, three things we'll look at here are the three types of clay we'll see. Earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain. So they're going to each be a little bit different, and we'll go over those, those differences here in the next slides. All right, so this is our first example of a type of clay. This is called earthenware. 
And some of the characteristics of earthenware here is that it is an earth tone. And so the color of earthenware is going to be an orangish, brownish, tannish, earth tone type of, of color to it. And so um, a, lot of, a lot of what we see from cultures that have passed, from civilizations that have passed, a lot of what we uh, try to learn about them comes from, uh, comes from their pottery, from different things like we see here. And you can see the little little decoration that this is is featuring here. We have a hunter which looks like he's going in for the kill shot with what appears to be some type of uh, wild boar, perhaps um, buffalo, something along those lines. And um, I guess we should wish Mr. Hunter luck there because he he looks like he could use a, a good meal. Okay, this is our second type of pottery. Uh, this is called stoneware, and stoneware is kind of the color of stone. It's a grayish type of color. And with stoneware, this is kind of the preferred medium of a lot of today's ceramists. Uh, stoneware is, is very durable, very strong, um, a little bit heavier probably than earthenware, uh, but it's also very easy to work with, very consistent material to work with, and so that's why uh, people seem to, to really... Uh, to like to work with it. And it has a little bit higher firing temperature, which we'll, we'll go over uh, what exactly that is uh, in a little while. A little bit hotter firing temperature than earthenware. With earthenware, our firing temperature is about uh, anywhere from 1300 to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. And stoneware's firing temperature is going to be basically where that leaves, leaves off, from 22 to 2500 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So that would be another difference between the two types of clay. And this is our third type of clay, porcelain. And porcelain actually looks very similar to stoneware before it is fired, but once it becomes fired, it becomes uh, white. And so that's uh, you know where the, the visual difference would be between these two. Uh, you can see this one being more of a gray color and this one being uh, a lot whiter here. And it has a, the highest firing temperature, just slightly hotter than uh, stoneware, anywhere uh, from 23 to 2600 degrees Fahrenheit. And, uh, you know, some things traditionally made out of uh, porcelain would be, you know, like maybe china, uh, toilets would be one thing traditionally made, or made out of porcelain as, long, uh, as well, as, well as, as dolls. So those are some, some things porcelain might be, might be used for there. Now, whatever type of clay we're working with, the process of, of working with it remains the same. That ceramics is going to be um, very malleable. You'll, you'll be able to move it very easily the more water that it has. As it begins to dry out, then it becomes more and more rigid. And so one thing that you do to fix the solidity to make it, it you know, more, have more structural integrity is you would basically bake it in a big oven. You would, that, that is what is called firing. And so once you fire it, then the pottery becomes you know, a lot more uh, stable, a lot more resistant to cracking and breaking. And so what you would do is you would use that kiln, which is a very, very hot oven, essentially, that would reach those temperatures we talked about earlier. You would put your pottery in there, you would fire it for a given uh, period of time, and then you would take it out, and then your, your pottery would be, um, like I said, a lot stronger, a lot more durable after that. And we also have a couple of methods of decoration um, that we can use with this firing technique as well. We have something called a slip and something called a glaze. With a slip, um, you, you basically uh, are going to have some, some limited options as far as decoration in terms of, of color. With uh, a glaze, you really have an almost un unlimited amount of, of color options with a glaze. Um, a glaze is actually going to uh, vitrify and fuse with the clay body as well. And so that could add, a, you know, an extra level of decoration and protection, too. And so for the glaze, for instance, you can see the top of the uh, vessel here has that bluish-green color, and the bottom has the yellow color. And so the top would have been dipped in, inside of a blue-green glaze, and then the bottom would have, would have been dipped inside this, this more yellow ochre type of, of glaze there on the bottom. 
And it's both a slip and the glaze are both kind of a creamy consistency, kind of a, a liquid soup looking type liquid that you would actually uh, you know, dip it or uh, brush it onto the pottery. And the thing about a glaze and a slip is you really don't see the color as much until it's actually fired. Especially with the glaze, you really uh, don't see that color emerge until, it, until after that, that firing process has happened. Okay, and so these are, are two ways that we can decorate as well as uh, protect um, the pottery. And so there's a lot of different methods we can have to create the forms. Um, there's uh, what's called like a slab building method, there's a hand building method, there's a coil building method, um, there's throwing, which is util utilizing a, a rapidly revolving potter's wheel as well. But regardless of those techniques, the you know the decorating and then that firing process uh, turns out turns out the same here. All right, so this is an example here of uh, the last section of sculpture, which is ceramics.